Why wait hours or days for analog or on X conversions when you can achieve perfect results in just two hours? In this video, I will unveil the future dream team of a static dental prosthesis with a groundbreaking two hour all on X delivery, featuring easy gum tissue composite strips and cutting edge photogrammetry technology. Discover how this innovative dual method approach transforms patient satisfaction and efficiency, delivering beautiful, lifelike prosthesis faster than ever. Contrary to some information found online, photogrammetry is not a 3D scanner. Instead, it functions more like a camera that captures images of individually calibrated scan flags in the patient's mouth. These images are used to calculate the spatial relationships and distances between multi-unit abutments. However, it does not determine the exact coordinates of these multi-units, but rather their relative positions to each other. Each scan flag is unique and must be assigned to a specific position in the patient's mouth. Therefore, meticulous preparation and organization are essential beforehand, otherwise the entire measurement may be inaccurate. All the scan flags are positioned onto the multi-units in the patient's mouth, in the order they were initially organized on the tray. Hand tighten them and tilt the flags so that all the dots are visible from a straight view. Using retractors to open the patient's mouth, we then use a photogrammetry camera to capture the position of all the flags. The position is then output as an SDL file, reflecting the specific situation in the patient's mouth. The challenging part is now organizing and aligning all the different scans. First, we have a photogrammetry file as an SDL. Second, we have the pre-op scan before the surgery. Third, we have an antagonist in bite relation with the pre-op. Fourth, we have a pre-op scan with markers and I usually play three on the lower arch. Fifth, we have the post-surgery scan with white caps, same as the photogrammetry file and the scan markers in the palette. Now, in Exocad, we need to import all the scans in the software. It is a good practice to number and rename the files in the order Exocad prompts for their import. The first step is to align all the scans to the one with the occlusal relation to the antagonist. Usually, this is the initial pre-op scan. We start by aligning the pre-op scan, the one with the scan markers in the palette, to the initial pre-op scan, which should be straightforward as it is initially the same situation. Next, we align the post-surgery scan, the one with the markers in the palette, to the pre-op scan, the one with the markers in the palette. For the lower arch, this can be tricky, so I recommend placing three markers, two in the posterior region and one in the anterior region. I use these scan markers as my primary alignment points. Finally, I align the photogrammetry SDL to the post-surgery scan. If the alignment is significantly off, I would check the fit of the scan marker scans in the patient's mouth and take a new photogrammetry image. Usually these scans align really well, especially when you're working with excellent oral surgeons like Dr. O'Neill and Dr. Simonton from Harbor Light in Ohio. Once aligned, I set the orientation extricate and detect the implant position. In this case, we are using a PIC scanner, and the team from PIC will provide you with all the necessary libraries. This case involves Swarman implants, so I'm using the director multi-unit PMMA selection and align the library to the PIC SDL. Avoid using the iOS scan file as your scan abutment file, since it will be highly inaccurate. After aligning all the photogrammetry scans, I clean up the post-surgery tissue scan and under edit mesh I close for example holes and remove artifacts. Then using freeform scan data, I gently smooth out the scan as the tissue is still very soft and flexible. The next step is optional. For a 2 hour all on 4 I could print the prosthesis, but I prefer the look and fit of the milled version. Using carbide burrs, I prepare the PMMA for the pink application. I open the embrasures and thin out the neck areas. I also sandblast the entire appliance with aluminum oxide. The next part, applying the pink with easy gum, is particularly exciting because it is a new and innovative product and I am one of the first beta testers on the market. First, we need to apply a bonder to the PMMA surface. Harvest Dental recommends Easy Bond, but you can use any other bonder like Bond LC. Only apply a very thin layer to the surface of easy gum and there is no need to cover the entire teeth. It's especially important to apply the bonder interproximal and about 1mm to the tooth structure. Then light cure it for no more than 90 seconds in a curing box. Harvard Dental developed a special instrument for the use of easy gum and I will demonstrate later how to use it and the modifications I made for an even better result. 
If you are familiar with clay modeling instruments, you will notice that these seems inspired by them. EasyGum comes in perfectly portioned strips, each individually packaged in pairs. You can reuse any leftover material, and surprisingly, the surface of these easy gum strips is not sticky. You can stretch them slightly before they tear, and my recommendation is to wear a latex glove and apply some Vaseline to make it even more smoother in the handling. Applying easy gum is straightforward, and I will demonstrate an efficient method. The application takes only 10 minutes, and you will see a timer in the upper left corner of the video. First, position the easy gum strip in the middle of the appliance and press it down gently. Avoid pressing too hard to prevent thinning the material excessively and pushing it into the teeth and the basal surface. If there isn't enough material at both posterior ends, don't worry, there will be plenty of leftover material to reuse in those areas. Next, carefully press the material into the interproximal areas. Clay modeling instruments with silicon tips work great for this step. I wet the tip with Model LC from NXDent and apply slight pressure to push easy gum between the teeth. Then, with a swift motion, I smooth out the basal area, ensuring it thins out nicely. Be sure no material gets into the multi-unit interfaces, because it will be difficult to clean those out. By using the Harvest Dental Papilla tool, I then model the CJ of the gingival. The tool has a perfect round end to mimic the gingival. I will show you later how I modified this tool for optimal performance, as it can sometimes tear and smush the easy gum instead of cutting and modeling it. As you can see, there's plenty of leftover material to apply in areas of insufficient thickness. The total working time before EasyGum hardens is about 10 minutes under normal lab light conditions, avoiding direct sunlight and large windows. Using a fine tip spatula, I remove excess material between the teeth and fine tune the CJ areas with a clay modeling tool with a fine tip. A sharp tip clay modeling instruments help to move and position small areas in the gingival and further thin out areas if needed. Make sure to clean up any easy gum on the teeth before curing them, as it will be harder to remove once it's set. After light curing easy gum for about 3 minutes, I use diamond disc and burrs to clean up the areas and open embrasures further. I've made an entire video detailing this process and I will leave the link in the description. After seam cleaning, I apply Nano Varnish from Dravid to glaze the appliance, though any glazing liquid of your choice can be used. Apply a very thin light coat going over each area only once before curing to avoid pits or bubbles. Nano Varnish is one of my favorite glazing liquids because it doesn't yellow the material. And be sure to keep the multi-unit interfaces and screw holes clear of any glaze. As I mentioned earlier, the Harvest Dental Papilla tool is not perfectly engineered. Also, it is a great idea. I made some modifications to ensure it makes a clean, sharp cut rather than smushing the material and having to clean it up more. I use a carbide burr and a white rubber wheel to thin out the tip and polish it with Oscar from AP Dental. After just two hours of total working time, including taking the pick scans, designing the appliance in ExoCAD, printing them with a fast printer like the Asiga Ultra, and applying the pink with easy gum, you can deliver a high aesthetic all-on-ex prosthesis, ensuring a happy patient. While I prefer milling the prosthesis in PMMA for adding strength and aesthetics, printing provides an excellent interim solution while working on a milled one for delayed load. A special thanks to Dr. O'Neill and Dr. Simonton from Harbor Light in Ohio for letting me film in their wonderful office. I hope you enjoyed the video and you had a great time. I appreciate you watching the video until the end. Please like and subscribe and consider to support me on Patreon. Until then, stay tuned.